What's going on, veteran fans? We have a new coach to talk about at one of the biggest positions on the staff at Wisconsin offensive line and one that's been a revolving door. Let's get some initial thoughts. Uh, how did they do with this hire? What do we expect? What do we know so far? We're going to talk about all that plus the linebackers on today's Lockdown Badgers with Coach. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Thank you for making this one of your first listens every single day. Um, really appreciate you jumping in. We have a fun one today. We got a lot to talk about, but first, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. Um, like we do every single week, it is my honor to have Coach Anderson on from the Dairy Raid. Definitely go check out his work. Coach, we were just going to come on. We were going to talk linebackers. I don't mean to diminish that. Like, we're still going to do yeah. that. <laughs> and then the offensive line, you were in the middle of releasing a series. You did like a five-part series on candidates. <laughs> Less than an hour after I posted the last one, uh, it comes out. And it, But what I like, it's a candidate I hadn't even thought of because it, it's going deep into the connections to – to find a connection between uh, Blazik and Fickle, but there, there is one through Chris Ash. So, you know, he was, he, I guarantee he was a, a well-vetted prospect and looking at his resume, I'm, I'm pretty excited what he can bring and watching some, some video of him speaking uh, both about scheme and just interviews in, in general on YouTube. It's hard not to get excited for a guy like him. Let me get some background quick and then we'll get into it. So, AJ Blazik, Blaz, is it Blazik? Blazik? I think it's. I think it's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with Blazik until somebody tells me I'm wrong. Yeah. If you know in the comments, let us know. We'll go with AJ Blazik. That's on me for not actually researching that before the show. Uh, but he, he was a center. He played at Butler Community College. Or it's not center. He's an offensive lineman. I actually don't know what position he played. Do you know what position he played? I didn't see. No. Okay. But he definitely played offensive line at Butler Community College. No. Um, then he went – so here's some of the background that I really like. I went to Iowa as a GA. I mean, if you if you want a growing – the great soil to grow an offensive line coach, like he was at yep. Iowa for several years as a GA. Um, and there's a bunch of other stops here. I'm not going to go through every one of them. I just wanted to highlight some of the ones I found interesting. Uh, Rutgers as an offensive line coach, but also as an assistant head coach. So he was the associate yep. head coach at Rutgers. That shows you a level of responsibility that he on his, had on his plate besides being an offensive line guy. To be an associate head coach, you have to understand recruiting. You have to understand organization. You have to understand structure. Uh, I thought that was very impressive. That's not something a lot of offensive line coaches have on their title, by the way, associate head coach. Not that, and not that quickly. I yep. mean, he was he was at Rutgers for one year, and he got the title bump. Uh, yep. And in, in his first FC, uh, FBS coaching job outside of his uh, GA work. Uh, so that shows right. he's well thought after, uh, thought of by his peers or Chris Ash, uh, uh, definitely. And, and then he know, also had uh, North, North Dakota State, which you're talking about a powerhouse program, not FBS, but that is a great program. Um, and then three years in the SEC. So we went from North Dakota State to Vanderbilt, three years in the SEC up until this point. That's kind of, again, he has some other stops in there as well, but that those were the highlights of his resume to me. Um, it is interesting at Vanderbilt, right? It's hard. You and I have talked about this, recruiting versus development versus evaluations, especially on the offensive line spot. You look back at what he's done as a recruiter at Vanderbilt, it hasn't been great, but it's also Vanderbilt, so it's really hard to evaluate. It's Vanderbilt, and I think that is one very important thing to talk about. Um, you know, everyone prides themselves at the academic standards that Wisconsin has. Uh, Vanderbilt as well. They are an elite academic school. Uh, they are – I would say they are the only true college football program in the SEC. You know, they're, they want, they want student athletes. So that's hard. And, and let, let's be honest outside of James Franklin, Vanderbilt football is nothing. So the fact that Clark Lee has won nine games in three years at Vanderbilt, he's probably in the top five of their all time wins already. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, but another thing that, that's really important to say with that is, one, you don't know what jobs are available. You know, he he got an opportunity. He took it. He took it with a first-time head coach, you know, getting, getting a job out of Notre Dame, taking a tough job, and 
you know, that hasn't been that successful. That doesn't mean he's not a good coach. That doesn't mean he can't teach. That doesn't mean he can't recruit because when you're competing in the big tw- or in the SEC, you're competing against a lot of people when it comes to recruiting. I, I think it's more important for recruiting that what people aren't looking at is he was at North Dakota State. He was at Western Illinois. He was at Winona State. The recruiting uh, fingerprint for those schools are the upper Midwest, mm-hmm. Pennsylvania, New York, the, the, the areas that we want to get our guys from. And he, I guarantee you, he has the contacts and the relationships with the coaches of the play, of the schools who have the players that we want to get. And then you add on top the fact that he was in at Rutgers and he's, he picked up the New Jersey, Maryland pipeline. And now he's going to have the resources and the name, the University of Wisconsin, to recruit for. Because, again, it's hard to recruit somebody to want to go to a bad school mm-hmm. that doesn't have a traditionally good football program. It, it's and, – and, and especially one that wants to be a true college football program. You know, Vanderbilt doesn't have some uh, – booster who's showing NIL money to entice people to go there. So I don't, I don't think there's going to be a problem with recruiting because again, if there would have been, he wouldn't have been hired. I, I care way more about, can he develop the players that he has and to do when he, when you're coaching at FCS levels, even at North Dakota state, you have to, you have to develop because you're not getting big time recruits at North Dakota State, even though they are the, one of the best FCS schools. Um, and they're get, they were getting three-star kids out of Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And they were recruiting Wisconsin high schools that, you, know, I, you look on there, Wanakee, Kettle Moraine. That's a great point. Trey, Trey Wedding and Rob Booker. You know, they, it's – Like he's been in the state. He knows the yeah, road. He, that's oh, a guaranteed, great point. Guaranteed. I mean, it, the, one of some of the first people I saw mention him – on Twitter this afternoon were Wisconsin high school coaches being very excited that he got the job and Wisconsin uh, small college coaches, people who coach football are excited that, that he got the job. And when you hear him talk ball on, on YouTube, uh, both instructional videos and videos, I think he knows his stuff. And, and again, you, you can make, you can make chicken salad out of chicken S, but it's still going to take like, taste like S. You know, that, that's that's the story of coaching at Vanderbilt. Um, there's nothing to worry about. Again, he wouldn't have gotten the job if, if, if Luke Fickle didn't think that he would be able to do what we needed him to do. And I, I don't see a problem. Well, coming back, I'll, I'll take a quick break for our friends at the show. And then coming back, I want to talk to you specifically about some of what you saw from his coaching breakdowns. I know we're early in this process. We're not trying to make definitive statements here. But what were your impressions watching him break down offensive line field? Because he's got a couple coaching DVDs out there. And mm-hmm. I was starting to watch one too. But I was like, coach is going to be better at this than I am. I'm going to get his take. We're going to do that coming up next on Lockdown Badgers. Plus, I'm, I'm going to ping coach on the linebackers. Where does he see them schematically fitting in the six transfers coming in? We're going to do that. Plus, take your comments coming up next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, a quick break for friends of the show. Also want to point out a couple people. I actually glossed over this. I missed this. A, B said he was a former all big 10 center at Iowa. I completely missed that. Toby Earl said he also played at Iowa. So that's, thank you guys for the insight. The chat is always here to make us smarter as well. All right, let's take a quick break. Our friends of the show over at FanDuel. FanDuel is the number one place for all of your sports betting needs. Everything that you want to do, whether it's spreads, parlays, futures, teasers, it's all there on FanDuel. I talk about it a lot. Uh, Football playoffs are coming up. Now's a great time. New customers, you make a $5 money line bet. Win or lose, you get $150 back in bonus bets. That's bonus bets whether you win or lose $150 to use on anything you want, right? Basketball's mid-swing. Uh, we don't have baseball yet, but obviously college basketball, that Badgers basketball team, they could cut nets. Like that could be a legitimate Big Ten championship deep run March team. Might not be a bad idea to do some futures there with the Badgers basketball team on FanDuel. Plus, like I said, NFL, all sorts of sports, everything's there. Plus, the user interface is incredibly easy to use. The payouts are fast, simple, efficient. There's simply no better place to do it. So right now, 
Go to uh, FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on and get started today. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of the NFL. All right, let's get Coach back on here. Coach, I want to talk a little bit about what do you see from him when he breaks down offensive line film? Like, What are some things you're picking out that you said you're excited seeing him talk, seeing him break down stuff? Where are we at with that? Yeah, what I really like hearing is he takes the approach of building blocking schemes from the top down. And what it means by what he means by that is an understanding defensive structure to know where the support is coming from. Uh, A lot of times when you're thinking blocking wise, you're thinking about what's in front of you and, and what's directly behind that. But, and that and that's easy because it's right in front of you. But you do not know where that sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth guy is coming from, unless you understand structural defensive football. And he even said it. And there's a there's a great video on YouTube of him talking, where when he started at Iowa as a GA, they stuck him in the DB room, and so he learned a lot about defensive back play which gave him a better understanding of defensive backs in run support. And that is, it's refreshing to hear. I like hearing that. Uh, And it's not to say that any of the coaches that we've had here before haven't done that. I'm sure they have. Uh, But it's, it's really nice to hear that he has that, you know, full field understanding of run support and, how that gets into blocking. And he also is, there's a lot of stuff on him that he has already understands coaching offensive linemen in an up-tempo offense. So he has the background and he already has the mentality of two very key things that are going to help us improve our running game this season and, and the passing game. Because also understand understanding where 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 the understanding the whole structure of the defense will also help in pass protection. Let, let me ask you this: What kind of impact do you think we we talked about this a lot with the quarterbacks, right? Uh, when we talked about Grant Mertz, some um, what kind of impact is having four offensive line coaches in four years, like a guy like Jack Nelson, like he's going to have a fourth a fourth uh, voice in his ear. I think the key thing that is going to help is that Coach Blazik is going to be able to come in and make his way of coaching, make his part of the system easy to understand so that the, that the returning players aren't translating in their heads, meaning, oh, he's talking about this, this was that last year. As soon as players are having to think, uh, trying to translate what they used to do into what they're doing now, you're already a a step behind. Um, It certainly doesn't help that they've had four coaches in four years, but a good coach will get a player excited about a system and he'll get them to be able to learn the system and hopefully forget what they learned in the past. Um, I I don't see why he can't do that. Uh, Also, the other good thing you think about this too, older guys, should have enough experience where you can throw anything at them and they will be smart enough to understand and to adjust. Younger guys don't know any better. Like the five kids coming in, the recruits this year, they don't know any better. And the kids who redshirted from last year, they don't know any better. Um, So they haven't been around long enough to pick up bad habits. And the older guys are hopefully smart enough to learn to avoid the bad habits. So I'm, it's not perfect, but as long as he can get that down where he can explain what he wants to do, he can coach them up. And I think that it sounds like that was part of the problem with Big Nell is he, he didn't focus enough on fundamentals. It was it was too much explaining, too much overthinking that caused issues, at least from what I've been reading. So watching coach Blazik coach. And again, there's plenty of stuff online. You can tell he loves to teach and he will be doing a lot of teaching this year. And he is young enough. And again, he mid forties. That's young these days. Yeah. If he, do, if he does right, he could be there for a long time. 
And if he can, and if he can build what, what Phil Longo wants him to do, but more importantly, puts his own spin on it. He's the type of guy who could be there for a long time. Cause he's shown that in the past, you know, he was at Winona state for a long time. He was at Western Illinois for a long time. Um, this could be that job that he sticks with. If he can, if he can teach. Well, let me ask you this, because that's actually one of my concerns. So he has stayed in spots for a while, but he's also moved a lot, right? So he, he's been yeah. in seven spots since 2023, um, a couple years, one spot, then four years, one spot, a couple. Now, the the one thing I would say that on the surface, that could feel a little concerning, considering I, I'm of the opinion that you have to nail this offensive line higher. You cannot keep a revolving mm-hmm. door here. And that's the worry for me, bringing in somebody who's moved several spots, right? But the one thing I would say is all these spots feel like linear progression, Right, he went from exactly. GA he, to FCS to like a Rutgers, yep. and then Andy. Like, it feels like he keeps climbing the ladder. He's cl- he, exactly, and 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 part of that too is that is the name of the game with coaching. For every Bud Foster who's been at one spot as an assistant coach for thirty years, there's the rest of us who are there as long as the head coach is there, and are there. It, it happens where guys just move because. People get fired. People get hired. Uh, things happen. Changing changing an offensive coordinator means we get a new offensive line coach. Changing head coach means we get whatever. So uh, that happens, and a lot of coaches jump through a lot of spots. And it's you, a lot of times it has nothing to do with uh, ability. Also, with the jobs they get, because if you lose a job because your head coach got fired, and you want to get a new job, there might not be something available. So you might have to take a lower job, whatever. Right. Sometimes that, I mean, he went from Rutgers to the FCS level. Now, some would argue going from Rutgers to North Dakota State is an improvement. Yeah, maybe. You make that. Um, but before that, he went from a lower level D2 school to a solid D2 school at Winona State to a mid-level uh, FCS program that they built into a playoff team to Rutgers and then to North Dakota State where he won a national championship. And then he went from, and if you want to say FBS, he went from Rutgers to the SEC and then to Wisconsin. So that maybe there isn't a spot where he can go up from here. And that's what I'm saying is like, maybe this could be the job that he, he can stick with. This one is from Kenneth Pulthus. Uh, swing and a miss. Why would we get an FCS O-line coach? Five and seven is looking even better. Um, certainly say, I would say this, and I appreciate everybody into the comments that all, as always, um, this is one of the better offensive line coach positions in the country. I, I think you could definitely make that argument, right? I know it hasn't been great recently, and turnover there has made it maybe look taking a little shine off. Does this feel like a home run hire? And I know that's not fair. We, we are making snap judgments here, and, and the truth will be told several years down the road, much like a draft pick. But mm-hmm. does this feel like the best camp coach available? Well, I'll, I'll start with what this guy's saying right here in the comments. Um, when when Nick Saban won his first national championship at Alabama, Kalen DeBurr was at Sioux Falls, NAIA school. Now, DeBoer is going to be the head coach at Alabama in not a very long period of time. The best candidate is the one who best fits what you want to do. Everyone has their start. And... What I would say to this is the people who are complaining about this guy getting hired are the people who are asking, oh, it should be Joe Thomas or Casey Robach or Ricky Wagner being the offensive line coach. Now you look at offensive line coaches and offensive linemen. They're the ones who are excited that he got hired. So no offense to the people who see FCS or see Vanderbilt and think that's bad. I'm going to trust the opinion of the people who coach football and the people that know him and that know the programs that he's coached at. There are good coaches at every level, every level. Mm -hmm. And there are good coaches. Every coach has to get their start. And then every coach has coach has to get their chance. And this could be a chance for him. If he can teach, I don't care where he coached last year. And just, just like there's talented players at every level that gets missed. Sometimes there's talented coaches and sometimes there's coaches who are building up through the ranks to get the job. And again, 
Kalen DeWar is a perfect example. Again, he was at Sioux Falls, what, six years ago? And now he was at the, in the national championship game this year, and he's going to coach Alabama next Alabama. year. Yeah, that just got announced if people didn't catch that. A good coach is a good coach. And I don't see why he is not a bad choice. I think, he's, I think he's a good coach. Uh, one of the things that immediately popped in my head when this happened, is it possible there's a – does this cause any friction, do you think, between Lou Fickle and Phil Longo to some degree? Because certainly Big Nell was Longo's guy, right? That, that was almost certainly Longo's guy. He came in. He's already been replaced. You wonder if that impacts that dynamic at all. I think if it would, Longo would be gone. Hmm. Because there were, there were offensive coordinator jobs available that he could have taken easily. Um, there are still offensive coordinator jobs that are going to be available. Um, I, I, would th- I would think Phil Longo was involved in this hire. And also, I think Phil Longo was involved in the discussions that maybe had been happening during the season. Um, Because if there was going to be a problem, and if the rumors are true that they were looking to replace him in season, then Phil Longo would not be there anymore. So I think Phil Longo understands, one, you don't get the boss angry, but you try to make it work. And... I think too, he might, again, it's, it's, it falls on Phil Longo. The mistakes that Jack Bicknell's offensive line made, it falls on Longo. And if he vetted him and it didn't work out, then it would be not in Phil Longo's best interest to work against the new guy coming in. So I don't think there's going to be an issue there. All right, let's take a quick break. I got one more friend of the show we got to bring on. We're going to come back. We are going to take a couple comments and definitely talk about the linebackers a little bit. Um, we could probably do a whole segment on offensive line, to be honest. Maybe we'll figure it out. But we do need to take a quick break for our friends of the show over at Game Time. Game Time is the number one source for all your tickets, everything you need. Again, whether you're buying for yourself or some loved one in your family, whatever it is, you can go to Game Time, find the event you want, whatever. We all got our things, right? Like everybody on here is a Badger fan, but people like theater, concerts, um, other sporting events, whatever it is. If you need, if you're desperate for those Phoenix Suns tickets in your life, you can go to Game Time. You can get them there. Best prices, lowest, our uh, best prices, um, quick availability, incredibly easy user, user interface, photos of the seat before you buy, it so you know exactly what it's going to look like when you're there. You no longer have to sit behind a beam or like a bad view. Game time has you covered for all of that. <clears throat> There's a reason they're the fastest growing ticketing platform in North America. And it's because they're easy, fast. They save you money, flash deals on last minute tickets. It's incredible. There's no reason to go anywhere else for any of your ticketing needs. Right now, go to Game Time, use the code Locked On College for $20 off your purchase. Download the app, use the code Locked On College for $20 off your purchase at GameTime.com. Go to GameTime.com, promo code Locked On, $20 off your purchase. All right, let's bring Coach back on. I uh, really do appreciate the time as always, Coach. Make sure you go follow him over at Dairy Raid. Help build up his channel. He's putting out really smart content as always. Um, a couple of comments I want to get to your Coach, and then I do want to talk about linebackers for a little bit. And then some of this yeah. we might just loop into another show that we do later. Um, this one is, let's see. Oh, I want to throw this compliment up here. This is from Kathleen Burroughs. Loved your uh, coaching series. Good education for me. So definitely want to pass that stuff along. Um, Thank you. Time, wanna- timely series. Yeah. Uh, Smo asks, can he, can he coach up uh, center snapping? We'll just leave that one there. Um, Shouldn't be a problem. Let, let's talk linebackers, and we'll start off with this one. So Nathan Hammond says, read a handful of comments about Tackett Curtis, the lateral movements, um, the ability in space. Wonder what you have to say about Tackett Curtis. And that's a good jumping off point for linebackers. I, I think he's a day one starter at the, at the field side inside linebacker. He has – the lateral movement speed and the agility to play sideline to sideline. And especially when you look at his high school film, once he finds the ball, he doesn't just go get the ball. He destroys it. So he's that great combination of a thumper and a guy who can run sideline to sideline. And that's what we desperately needed last year. Um, He's going to step into Mumajang Mehta's spot and play it faster which is really needed. Um, he's not coming in from, he's not coming here to sit on the bench. He's not coming here to be a red shirt. He's coming in to play and play early 
and he has the athletic ability, I think, to be a dominant inside linebacker for us. What about um, – so you got him coming in as a, a kind of a day one starter, dominant inside for us. Who else do you have out of this group of six linebackers coming in playing a majority of snaps or playing a, a bulk of the snaps here? I think first thing, the, a big reason why we're bringing in so many linebackers, and I've been kind of talking about this you know, as this offseason has evolved, I think you're going to see the system evolve this year to where you're going to get more linebackers on the field. I think I think the 2-4, 3-4 four, four defense – Closer to what Dave Aranda ran is going to is going to become more of the norm than the three three. Um, Fickle is known for being able to evolve his system year from year. He comes in, in with what he wants to do. He identifies problems and they adjust going into next year. This year, we identified the problem with not having enough athletes in space and not being able to track the football. So. It, with that sense, I'm thinking more of a two-four, four linebacker set to start. Um, Pius, I think, is a day one starter at the weak side, uh, outside linebacker. I think Jaheim Thomas is a day one starter at the weak side, inside linebacker, uh, the boundary inside linebacker. Tackett Curtis is a day one starter at the inside linebacker, the strong, the strong side inside backer, and then. Depending on, I, I think uh, Lowry is going to be in the rotation as a strong side linebacker. I also wouldn't be surprised to see him put his hand in the ground in, in three down sets as a strong side defensive end. Uh, mm. Maybe even Pius, maybe even Pius too. Pius is a little shorter, so I, I see him more as, as a stand up guy. But Lowry's got a little bit more length. They can put a little bit of weight on him. Maybe he can play uh, on the edge as well in, in three down sets. Um, I think Galvin, he has potential to play. I, I see him maybe evolving into more like a dollar kind of spot because I, I think I think Hunter Wohler is going to play deeper safety this year uh, because he wants to go to the NFL, and the dollar position doesn't exist in the NFL. So it would be in Hunter Wohler's best interest to play off-the-ball safety this year and next to Austin Brown. So if that means, you know, Kamoy Latu, if he sticks around for one more year, comes up and plays dollar, I think Galvin it is a guy who could play dollar. Um, he's also a candidate, I think, who could redshirt because he is still young. Um, Cheeks, Cheeks is pr- looks like he's pretty um, versatile. He got, he's got some size. He played inside backer at UNC. He played outside linebacker in high school. So he could be a guy who could be a sub rotator with uh, with Thomas maybe, and then maybe put his you know get up on the line and be a pass rusher if necessary. Um, so the, the 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 three that I mentioned are I think are going to be every down type of guys with Pius Thomas and, and uh, Curtis Lowry I think is going to be maybe more of a rotational guy with Daryl Peterson. And then Cheeks might be a rotational guy with the inside linebacker group, wherever they decide he fits best. And then I think he could be the heir apparent to Jaheim Thomas at the weak side inside linebacker spot. Um, and it also it also really depends on how the inside linebacker room shapes up after the uh, spring transfer window. Mm-hmm. Because inside linebacker is one of those spots where there are some bodies that could – at least have their athletic scholarships transferred to academic scholarships, or if not gently asked out the door because there's a log jam there. So let me ask you this, because you, you kind of yeah. mentioned Peterson a little bit as a timeshare potential. Um, you, you, I noticed you didn't really talk about Cheney potentially coming in here either. Or not ch- coming in, staying in. Where, where do you think some of those guys fall into rotation? Because I, I've thought Peterson could still be a guy who can set the edge for you. I don't think he's the pass rush you need, but I think he can no. play first, second down. And I actually I think I feel like Cheney, like people saw the LSU game differently than I saw it. So I'm definitely curious when you're taking this. People saw Cheney miss tackles in the backfield, three of them. Which, yeah, I mean, you got to make – I saw him getting into the backfield. I still feel like he was the most disruptive of the linebackers we had last year. He had a really nice tackle in open uh, open field against LSU on a third down. I don't necessarily think he's not going to get playing time next year. No, no, I, and I wouldn't say that either. I mean, we rotated three inside linebackers through two spots for the majority of the year. Um, 
he could certainly, I think he could get in the rotation. Um, but I also think, I don't think Jaheim Thomas is coming in to sit on the bench. And I don't think um, uh, Brain's not working. Tackett's coming in yeah. to not start. So he could get in that rotation for sure. If it's going to be a three-man rotation, he would probably have the edge over Cheeks uh, to get into that rotation. Um, but I also think that they might want to try to get more people in that rotation because I think part of the reason why we only saw three inside linebackers last year is because they thought they only had three inside linebackers who could do the job. Um, Daryl Peterson as well. I, he could easily get in that rotation because Lowry, I think, could play both as as an edge rusher and as a run-stopping field linebacker. Um, but Peterson can also be a, a field linebacker, uh, a situational guy. Um, they, a lot of the guys that they're bringing in this year are, have have a little bit of hybrid to them. So you, I could easily see personnel packages that get guys going through. And that also doesn't, um, you know, he just mentioned there, I forgot Christian Allegro. Right. He could easily, and, and, and Allegro could get into, again, um, he can get into the rotation with Pius. He could get in rotation. He could, he, I can see him fitting all four spots. So there's depth right there. And it, I think it, it really depends on what they value. You know, Ch- Chaney is a tough player. But like everybody in that inside linebacker group, he he was great at attacking, but seeing the ball and 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 reacting, he had problems with. So it might be more situational for for him, and and maybe the entire group. Um, there's a lot of talent in that group now, and, and it, I think improved talent. Yeah, in a lot of ways, that's the point, right? Like I, I'm a guy who falls victim. I do this because I, I follow recruiting and I've been following recruiting for a couple of decades. And I, you know, I don't want to say you get attached to the players that come in, but you cheer for them. You root for them. Like you get mm-hmm. excited when they commit. Um, but this is the point of it. Like you stack competition. And if it does mean some players, I mean, some players aren't going to play quite frankly, you can't put eight linebackers on the field. So, but the competition is the depth. The depth allows you to compete with the, the big boys. Or it allows you to overcome injuries. Those are things all the great teams have. So I think this is the approach they need to take. It's just interesting to try to figure out where all those pieces will line up. Yeah. And I think it's, it's just going to, I think there's going to be systematic changes. Cause you, again, you are seeing they're bringing a lot of linebackers. Now, whether they're still working on defensive linemen, they got one, which is awesome. Um, I think that you're going to see the, the defensive line group have a lot less responsibility. You know, they're still going to be important, but they're going to have less responsibility issue, and they're going to have that fall more on the linebackers, which a more multi-linebacker uh, system would allow for and ask for. And I think that's where we're heading. Well, I thought this was a good comment here from um, Nathan. Looks like we're morphing from the stout downhill linebacking core to a sideline to sideline speed and length group. I just I think there's more versatility in general with mm-hmm. the, the group you're bringing in. The guys like Muma, those. I was talking to somebody the other day um, who, who was involved in the tacket recruitment, and we were talking about Muma, and it was just the consensus was Muma was he wasn't for this version of Wisconsin's defense. Mm-hmm. He was he was for Iowa. He was for games like that, and we we're moving away from that. Yeah, and 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 that's a way that we have to go because as college football evolves and as the game keeps going, there are less and less Iowas out there. Heck, even Iowa this year is not going to be the same Iowa that we've had. Mm-hmm. Well, at some point, we'll <laughs> uh, you know, it's there are less Iowas and less Paul Chris Wisconsin's than there ever have been. And it's it's not going to go back the other way. So you, that's why you're going to see teams full of hybrids and full of tweeners and guys who can play in and out of different positions. And you're going to see a lot of guys getting playing time because of that, if they can fill a role. It's just like the concept of the running back by committee is you get three running backs to do the work of one, one running back back in the day. You could do that with linebackers. I mean, I could easily see cheeks coming in, in, in long passing situations and taking Thomas out or bring, putting Thomas up on the line and taking Lowry out or you name it, you know, having a bunch of guys who have different skill sets is a good thing because it, it allows Trestle and Fickle to be creative when it comes to designing pressures. The only issue is now you have to manage those egos, which that's why coaches make a lot of money. 
right? But it's not like a video game where if you have six linebackers, you can just kind of insert them in and out. And like, you're not really suffering in any locker room issues doing that. No. In the locker room, they're going to have to manage that because people transfer well, into play. Um, you know, it, it's it, it's going to come down to um, it's not like this recruitment has been a secret. You know, guys came in before the deadline to uh, for the Wisconsin guys to enter the portal, and a lot of guys stuck around, so they're ready for the challenge. And that's just what's going to have to be. And and the cream rises to the top. The best are going to stick. The one the ones who aren't aren't. And that's how it should be. Mm-hmm. It's it's not personal, you know. They're you know Luke Fickle is not bringing in five linebackers because he he doesn't like Brian Sandborn. It's because he wants better linebackers. Yeah, no, it's and it's it's, it's one hundred percent because we saw every line, every running back, and every quarterback that wanted to get to the edge last year get to the edge against us. It I mean, it's it's as simple as is as simple as we would assign sometimes linebackers to. Um, spy on a den or cam ward for example and then Mm -hmm. they would get burned like that's why linebackers are coming in we weren't fast or athletic enough there last year no it's it's and and it has and we would have seen the same problem if we're playing in jim leonard's defense if anything this this version of this group of players lack the athletic ability to play how they should now regardless of scheme Mm-hmm. Jim Leonard's linebackers with that they have the same problem with Cam Ward than than uh, Luke Fickles did. All right, we're gonna wrap it there, and I, a lot of times we didn't get to. I might just pull some of these up, and we'll have like another breakdown show of just questions and comments and thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, he is Ryan Anderson. Go follow the Dairy Raid. A uh, new offensive line coach coming in today. A bunch more content coming out uh, this week or next week. Some fun stuff coming up. You're not gonna want to miss. Plus today we did an interview with Emilio Agard's parents that dropped. Um, really good folks. Like, I think you guys will, will like listen to that coach on Wisconsin and, uh, we'll talk next week for sure. Sounds good.